What is absolute freedom according to you? ज्वाला है, ज्वाला है, हाँ, चल चलते चलेगा क्या? चलो, बैठी हवा साथ। Favorite cricketer? He bowled, he batted, he fielded. His catch of Vivian Richards in the World Cup. ना कुमारी मधुबाला टू में ना मधुबाला टू में चुड़ी शादी नहीं होने दो। Abish, don't listen to him. Unbelievable, Kulchas, पागल है क्या? क्या बात? Legend है वो। Thank you, means a lot. Boom. Boom. I don't have to say it. How would you introduce yourself? I sleep to dream. And then I wake up. I heard that you worked as a waiter in Shamiana. Taj. Loved it. Amazing Indian of the year. He got it. He got it. I know what you're talking about. Good one. Uppercut. See the way you make it. I'm not going to cry. I'm going to cry. Thank you so much, sir. Wow. Serial, creative, entrepreneur. A dreamer and a doer. These are just some of the ways that today's guest describes himself. I had the privilege and the pleasure of sitting down with the legendary Shailendra Singh and speak to him about his life and so many amazing things that he has done. Shailendra Singh is the founder, the creator of the Sunburn Festival, which is now the largest EDM festival in Asia. He is the founder of Percept. He has produced over 72 Bollywood movies. He has managed some of the greatest names in the sports industry. He has started 23 successful startups. And more than just his achievements, what I admire about him is his powerful presence, razor sharp observation power. And if you come in his presence, Somehow, he will lift you up, he will energize you. In this conversation, we try to understand the mindset behind a person who has done so much, what it takes to do so many successful ventures and to create such a huge impact in the society. We spoke about his sunburn story, we spoke about his cricketing and Bollywood journey, we spoke about his childhood, his growing up years, and we spoke about today's times, entrepreneurship and startup scenario. This is a conversation which I urge all of you to watch till the very end. Each line, each sentence that this guy has spoken carries so much wisdom that if our attention is bright enough, if we grasp what he has to say, our lives will change for the positive for sure. Without much further delay, here is Shailendra Singh on the mic with Parth. Enjoy. So, hello and namaste, sir. Thank you so much for giving me your time. My pleasure, Parth. <laughs> and, and there are very few people I look up to when it comes to their work and just the way they carry themselves. I always say that even if one doesn't know who you are, mm -hmm. but if he sees you, he will think ki kuch to hai yaad. <laughs> Just the way you walk, you bring in a whole power in the room. Yeah. And that was my first impression of you. And you know why? why? I'll cut you here. I got to know just three and a half years ago. Why? I was standing below Chandratal Lake at 4.30 in the morning. And that day I felt a connection with the mountains. And I didn't know why, because I always thought I was an ocean guy. So that was the first time in my life I felt some connection when the first ray of sunlight at about 4.30 hits the top of the, Correct, the mountain, peaks. the peak, the, the golden, golden the golden, hour. golden hour. And I said, there's something magical about it because it was minus 15, it was freezing cold. Why was I out, out of the tent? Hmm. Why was I not under the five blankets? And hmm. then subsequently I Googled my name, finally. Because in my family, my elder brother is Ravindra, mm -hmm. middle brother is Harindra, mm -hmm. I am Shailendra, mm -hmm. my cousin is Jitendra, mm -hmm. Upendra, <laughs> Devendra. <laughs> so, I thought that this family was getting bored. So, everyone wrote their names from Dhira. Rhyming. But my name is Shailendra and it means the king of mountains. Now, you know. Wow. So, that's why when I enter a room, it's a mountain in motion. <coughs> it's the feeling, which I myself didn't know. Sounds a little arrogant, but the fact of the matter is that's the meaning of my name, which I got to know now. Wow. And you are a mountain man. Oh. So that's why I felt like doing this now. Awesome. Because I love what you do mm. and you are spending your life, which is, I believe is me and my home, mm. the mountains. Mm. And that's why I felt like connecting and talking to you. Awesome. Thank you. Means a lot. Boom. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> and, and 
people saw your introduction before this conversation yeah. if i had to ask how would you introduce yourself who is who is shalinder singh in your words i, I very simply uh, i dream and do i have no other formula of living life success or whatever it is hmm. i just dream and i do every every time people think that you sleep at night because it's dark because you're tired i don't know various reasons people sleep yeah i sleep to dream and then i wake up to fulfill that dream <laughs> kya baat hai jab so khwab dekho jab jaag jao unko pura karo phir so phir khwab dekho phir pura karo yahi to jeevan hai aur ek din aayega jab tum soge aur uthoge nahi hmm uske baad tum andhere mein hamesha khwab dekhte rahoge hmm wah use kehte hain maut और उसको पूरा करने वापस आते हैं <laughs> शायद इज इट स्टिल लाइक दिस लाइक आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट दिस माइंड सेट इज नीडेड व्हेन यू आर यंग एंड व्हेन यू हैव समथिंग टू डू इन दिस वर्ल्ड दैट्स व्हेन यू हैव टू फर्स्ट सी व्हाट यू वांट टू डू एंड देन टेक मैसिव एक्शंस बट आर यू स्टिल लाइक दैट एट दिस स्टेज इन योर लाइफ सो आई लाइक आई आई यूज अ क्लीशे यंग इज अ स्टेट ऑफ माइंड इज जो बाइडन यंग is narendra modi young mukesh ambani young mm-hmm. zamita bachchan young you know in what their, i mean in their action they are I, it, yeah so the point i'm going to make is that yes the body reaches a point of fatigue and tiredness and the body has the aging uh, mm. progression mm. attached to its growth mm. but the mind only evolves and gets younger with experiences and knowledge so it's a wow combination Uh, when your body starts getting tired and aging your mind gets sharper and young it compensates mm. so i think the it's it's a lethal combination you know mm. and that's why maybe primarily that all the world leaders mm. or decision makers for the population of the planet which is 8.5 billion people are all people beyond 65 60 70 <laughs> so you you may feel young and cool but your life is monitored and controlled by people who are seriously old wow So are they smart or are they dumb? Smart. Exactly sure. the point. Yeah. So you have to be very careful when you speak about age. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. No. Lot of things to ask. Lot of questions. Sure. Personal questions and questions which would relate to the people. But let me take you back because I personally, I consciously chose not to do a lot of research about you before doing this interview because I wanted it to be fresh and spontaneous but I just would like to know where are you from and how did this journey start how was your childhood like and the progression from there as you grew up okay i'm going to try and look at the camera and say it <laughs> yes is that okay <laughs> absolutely so i was uh, born in kanpur in uttar pradesh and uh, my father was a sugar te- technologist when i was born i i think uh, I I may have not been required in the family because the family at that time already had enough family members and my dad was very busy trying to make a living and my mom was hosting about 20 relatives from the village and I was just given to the watchmen so to, from the age of 0 to 5 and a half I was living with living with the watchmen so whenever I cried because my father was uh, working in a sugar mill they used to put sugar in my mouth so that's my childhood until today I cannot sleep without sugar I can't live without sugar and thank god I don't have diabetes yet anyway long story short mm. dad kept hopping from one state to the other and therefore we had to also hop so from uttar pradesh to bihar bihar to some punjab and then from punjab to finally karnataka and Maharashtra border, which is Samir Wadi, Lakshmi Wadi, and Savant Wadi, three factories. He was general manager. Clash between Karnataka and Maharashtra, which is still on about the that region. Correct. The you know it's still yes. on. Uh, it got sort of flamed up at that time, and they uh, there were riots in my father's factory, and we were studying in Belgaum at that time, and the fourth standard, and my mum took an ST bus. Riots, guns, fire, everything. Hell break, broke loose. They came in a truck in the morning at 3 a.m. My mother was wounded, bleeding, and then that night, my father and mother brought us to Mumbai because the headquarters of the sugar mill was in Mumbai. So that's when the journey began in Mumbai. When we came to Bombay, we were nervous because we were small town kids. We didn't know what to do, 
and we were put in a school which uh, required us to speak Marathi but so mm. therefore I was failed in fourth standard mm. I had to go from 4A to 4B in Senzivas Dhobi Talao but then uh, being a Jat boy from the north of India you know Jats generally are farmers or athletes yeah. or army, army professionals Correct. we don't know anything else <laughs> so I just took upon myself that now that I'm in Bombay I'm going to rule Bombay and I'm going to fulfill every possible dream that I dream of in this city <clears throat> and from having not even two rupees uh, in a day allowance for eating and traveling while going to school. And how old were you in this? Uh, I was at the age of nine and a half, ten when mm -hmm. it started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I studied in St. Xavier's HR, etc. Not good in academics. Mm -hmm. Loved cricket. I was supposed to play cricket for the state and country. I was that good. But my father scared me because sports was not a profession at that time. Mm -hmm. So I had to really go through really a hard, interesting time of, mm. you know, struggling financially and also in confidence. I didn't know why I was failing in school and college. Very late in my life, I got to know I'm ADHD and dyslexic because these things in India, mental health, ADHD, dyslexia are not things that people discuss in families. Mm. You know, they feel that something is wrong with you. Mm. You know what I mean? Exactly. The pagal ho gaya types. Exactly. So yeah, much later in the day, I realized that my disability was, was my strength. Wow. And uh, I've countered that and I never knew that that disability will become a strength in my profession and, mm. and I'll be able to conquer every dream in Mumbai. You know, so that's the journey. So when you say you made the best out of being like, like having ADHD yeah. and dyslexia, what do you mean by that? The world looks at it as such a big problem, but you are saying that you made it your strength. Yeah. In what sense are you saying that? I have a very interesting story to share with you. I went to the world, uh, the Laureus World Sports Awards, which mm. is like the Oscar of sports. Mm. And uh, it was my first time there. And um, uh, I think they were having the uh, a ceremony for the Paralympics. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was an athlete who was called upon stage and uh, before. Um, uh, so when he came on stage, uh, he was given an award, uh, a gold medal by the Olympics for skiing. And he's wearing a suit. Mm. And then they played the AV. And then I realized that in the AV that he was skiing with one leg. Yeah. Because on stage he was with, in a suit. Yeah. And then when they gave him the medal, gold medal and he said, uh, he was the athlete of the year come and uh, he looked at the audience and he said all of you have two legs mm. this is what I'm doing with one leg I hope you're using both your legs <laughs> well enough in life wow. so once disability is somebody else's strength and I don't feel uh, uh, once you know uh, your weakness you can convert into a strength and also then you know reading a lot about it you realize that some of the geniuses on the planet are ADHD and dyslexic exactly. people. So some of the most uh, genius people are, you know, whether it's Einstein and it goes on and on. Yeah. I don't want to throw many names, yeah. but yeah. so I don't know. I thought it was brilliant. You know, I, I was academically weak, but super sharp in life. And that is proven by doing 23 startups in 23 years and, you know, creating history in mo most of the business spaces and creative spaces yes. that I traveled for now. As you said, 23 startups and still going on full full power. I want to understand the mindset behind doing so many things. For example, I what I inferred from observing people around me that those who've had hard childhood, they are the ones who are so driven to do things in the world. So do you think somewhere this was one of the reasons why you had something, the fire inside to just do and rise out of this and have the best of the world? What's the mindset behind doing so much? Yeah, and I think <coughs> what you're saying is generally applicable. Mm. But I think this interview that you're doing with me is about me. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, I have to be truthful about exactly what I feel. Mm. So two things are very important for me in life. I celebrate every breath and every heartbeat. And I'm extraordinarily happy about being alive. I feel the biggest gift that we have the biggest award, the biggest acknowledgement, the biggest reward we have is being alive. Absolutely. So you spend your entire life mm. being work in progress mm. and trying to get to some destination. Mm. But you know from the time you're born, you're heading towards death. Your life is nothing but a fistful of sand. The faster you squeeze it, the sooner it goes. So if you ha <laughs> handle that sand well, mm. you, you can make your life more wholesome. So I just... I just believe being alive is, is the biggest celebration. And the second element that inspires me in life is dreaming and doing. I mean, what bigger gift can you get that you dream of something? Like I dream of landing a helicopter in Wankhede Stadium. I'm the only one who did it. <laughs> First really? and last, yeah, yeah, for my game, Good Luck India match. So I have dreamt and I've done it. I don't know how to explain to you. I wanted to do fashion in India. I, I don't even know the F of fashion. 
I ran seven editions of the Fashion Week. I launched about 400 textile brands. I represented every living choreographer, every designer, or every model. I don't know what to tell you now. This yeah. is just fashion. Then I dreamt of cricket. I raised $2 billion in cricket. Yeah. Then I read, dreamt of boxers. You know, Then I used to go to the village in North India and pick 30 boxers. <coughs> Vijinder Singh, yeah. Dinesh, Kumar and whatnot. Yeah. So it's like just dreaming and doing, man. This is amazing. I, I'm sorry I did not do so many startups and you know things in my life for money or power or anything else i i didn't mm. it never mattered to me actually they were just a consequence of yeah and the consequence is not just for yourself mm. if i get a profit of uh, two crore rupees mm. uh, there has to be a circulation of 20 crores and when there is a circulation of 20 crores to earn two crore net profit for me 18 lakh salaries are being paid to people through either the product Absolutely. or the system or the mm. skill sets mm. that is fun for me <laughs> to see that my action employed 500 people mm. ran their homes Wow. So my dreams are not just mine. Mm. But when I fulfill my dream, through me, so many people fulfill their dreams maybe. Absolutely. How cool is yeah. that? Absolutely. So this is that combination that I have a formula in life, which is, uh, I call life a simple Hindi formula, which is Sangharsh, Safalta, Seva. Wow. So I combined all three together in my life. Generally, people struggle, succeed, and they have to do service before they go. Oh, you will not feel fulfilled. One after the other. Yeah, struggle, yeah. success and uh, service. So same thing, Sanghar, Safalta and Seva. For me, I combined it from day one in my Percept days and till today, nearly 30 to 40 percent of my earnings I have always shared. Always for different causes, education, earthquake, yeah. HIV, National Association of Blind. It is, you can check my track record. Yeah. I loved it. Mm. Are, if you succeed and you don't help society and humanity then what is your success what is how you define your success mm -hmm. there is no impact there is no imp zero for your own self when you sleep at night yeah what are you gonna sleep <laughs> hugging your rolls royce over <laughs> no absolutely and and one follow-up question to the question that i asked because a lot of people watching here are young people and in today's <laughs> in today's <laughs> generation one big big it's i don't know if it's a problem or if they're getting stuck somewhere Everybody wants to do things, everybody wants to achieve, everybody wants to earn big, you know, get sure. big cars and everything. But when it comes to taking actions, they don't do that. You've seen more Diwalis than I have. Yeah. So on behalf of everybody, let me ask ask you, why do you think uh, like this problem is there? That karna sabko hai, lekin actions lene ki bari aati hai, tab bad jate hai log. You, this generation is bought, born into an era of quick fixes quick satisfaction, quick relationships. You're bo born into a digital era. You are distracted. You are born distracted. So the focus lag, the will is there. The talent is there, but you're distracted. You lack focus and it's not your fault. It is not the fault of the young generation, the youth, whatever, whoever you want to address this to. It could be even a 40 year old guy. Correct. There's lack of focus because there is Ample distraction and ample quick fix. If you can get that one gulab jamun at home in 20 rupees, why would you care to know that the best gulab jamun in Mumbai is in Chembur in Jama? And why would you take a BST bus, <laughs> make that effort of going to Jama and eating that gulab jamun when Swiggy will come to your house and slam it in your mouth? So you will never know what a real good gulab jamun means and the process to make it because you've born in a quick fix situation. Hmm. I mean, do you know that not just me, Times of India carried a national article that the people between the age of 21 and 25 are having 76% less sex than the previous generations. Because you rather look at YouTube videos and be on Instagram than, than go through the process of calling the girlfriend, taking her for a drink or co coffee, <laughs> seducing her, then bring her back and then do foreplay. <laughs> and then there's no guarantee that you're going to get an orgasm in the end because Gee. she may not or Gee. she may leave you halfway. <laughs> so there's no guarantee of satisfaction. You say, fuck this shit, man. Mm. You know what I mean? And the principal <laughs> question was, why is this generation not so eager to fulfill their dreams? And I said, hmm. there is ample distraction and lack of focus. You are talented. You have the will. You have, you all, we all dream uh, of being someone or owning something or experiencing and we all can do it. I just think it's about 
getting the right focus. Once you have the dream and you have the focus, there's nothing can stop you, to be honest. <coughs> you know what I mean? So that's what I meant to say that, uh, you know, you're born in an era of quick fixes, mm. but there are no shortcuts to success. Mm. There is no shortcut. You have to put it. And, and we particularly in, in India, we've become a land of traders. We're not the land of creators. We are, we're a land of handshakes, commissions, and we're not people who are desperately enjoying the <coughs> dreaming process. Mm. You know what I mean? We've been mm. tuned into since independence, which is only 75 years. Mm. You know, we're a new nation. Mm. We've been told to just, Mera kya hai? you know, mm. where's my little money that I want for my living? Very short sighted. Yeah, very short sighted. We're not very, very excited about creations, <coughs> inventions, that this is my creation. This is my space. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know how to explain to you. I am, I you know, you, you, you know, oh, everybody should understand that not just in India, but across the world, you can go into a, a, a banquet hall and, and have 100 people in the room. 99 people are millionaires and billionaires in the room. But there is one actor, one singer, one famous person, you know, yeah. an artist, yeah. a famous artist. <clears throat> All the guests will go to the artist, not to the billionaires. billionaires. Wow. Why? Creator they create something for you that you consume. Wow. So money is not a creation. Money is a necessity. So I think that that part is also critical. Mm -hmm. You came here in the city at a very young age and then you went through the rigors of schooling and everything. I heard that you worked as a waiter in Shamiana, <laughs> in Taj. <laughs> Loved it. Loved it. Okay. How old were you? 19, 20. I don't know. Must okay. Be, must be that age. But I, I took a job because my mother challenged me that because that time I was playing cricket and making about three and a half, four lakhs in Scotland as an amateur. No, uh, for the season. Okay. Four months, Correct. four and a half months. But that's a lot of money at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, proper money for an 18 year old. And uh, But then you know, my mom was always worried that will, with my qualifications, which are not so good, will I ever get a job? Mm. And she was reading this newspaper called Navara Times. She speaks Hindi even till now. She saw Taj recruitment ad. She says, the Taj is a very big company. So, you work for Papa to keep Dad quiet, get a job in Taj. <coughs> Once you've got a job, na, he'll believe you can get a job on your own. Because I know you can get it. I didn't know. I went, applied as a uh, graduate trainee, GT. They had GT and MT, management trainees and graduate trainees. Okay. 8,460 applicants for graduate trainees. <laughs> Mrs. Mahajani was the recruitment head. She had long head on the ground. <laughs> she was, I think, uh, Mr. Vankade's daughter. Oh. Mm. She interviewed with us. We went through <clears throat> seven rigorous interview rounds and uh, nine of us were selected finally. Out of 4,000? Some, some yeah, odd yeah. number. Yeah, 8,460 okay. or whatever. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. I, and then because I went through so much pain to get the job, I said, I said fuck it, let me just do it. <laughs> and then I didn't realize because at that time I was in HR college and I was a really cool guy and all. Like I was socially very active without money. <clears throat> you know, I used to hang with people who had money and but I had all glamorous friends. Okay. All of them came to take revenge to Shamiana when I used to wear a bow and serve them to have, you know, club sandwiches and milkshakes. So wow. it was a very humbling experience to understand truthfully what my reality was what was I worth so I was worth 1280 rupees per month state bank of India Mandalik house Kolaba, where my money is still lying I didn't take it out my salary 1280 rupees per month was my salary <coughs> for that you had to work a nine hour shift and then travel three to four hours so you can imagine what it was and on sometimes the hotel made you do double shifts and whatever mm. You know what double shift means, Parth? Yeah. So you work nine hours, you're going home, and your senior comes and says, Hey, Shalindra, I need a favor from you. I said, What happened? Two of my colleagues, your colleagues have fallen ill. Can you jump in for them? I said, Sure. You do another shift after three hours of gap. Then after your second shift, you're going home. So the supervisor comes and says, Where are you going? I said, Home. But isn't your regular shift starting in three hours? I said, Dude. Oh, my. <laughs> That's a lesson to learn what it takes. Uh, to succeed in life. Everybody watching uh, this interview has had their struggles. So my struggle is no great shake. But a lot of learnings in that job. Yeah, Good learnings, very strong learnings. And when and what was the first, like you have, as you said, created multiple, multiple businesses on your website. You are called a serial entrepreneur. So what was the first? Serial creative entrepreneur. Serial creative. I love the creative word in it. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. So what was the first venture and when was that and how was that like? The mothership <coughs> was advertising. 
So mothership was uh, advertising, and advertising got us into the door of a client. You know, every client and brand needs advertising. Mm. You know, from condoms to cosmetics, everybody needs prachar, as they say. But once you get into the client's <laughs> boardroom, mm. you know, giving him solution on their brands, it's not so simple. Mm. You know, to be able to advertise somebody else's product, you will have to know the product better than the manufacturer. <coughs> wow. Otherwise, how else can you market the product? So we had to. I had to go to factories and understand what fabric they're making in CRM or Hero Honda, the motorcycle, 100 cc Splendor. Why is that selling? And why is it the largest selling two wheeler in the world? What is a four stroke engine, two stroke, or whatever, 80 kilometers per liter? So you have to really go deep down so that the management and the owner understands that you equally, if mm. not better, understand their product. Mm. But once you've got into them, mm. then you try and fulfill all their needs. That is <coughs> how I did my business. So I entered the advertising, then slowly took their PR account, then slowly took their experimental marketing account, then activation account, then their event account, mm. then their media buying, mm. then their content making, which is ad films and all that, mm. took that also. Then I also took their if the owner's son was getting married, I also did his wedding management. Whatever you could do. Whatever I could do. What <laughs> I saw an opportunity in everything. And I converted that opportunity into a business. Like and I, I yeah. saw one of your videos, a speech. Uh, I think it was 2013 where you gave this speech. And you, you gave the example of opportunity. Yeah, yeah. And I think you can explain that story. I think that story fits into this, what you were saying so well. <laughs> it just shifted my mind like, oh shit. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, when you read a newspaper, there are opportunities in it. When you see a billboard, there's an opportunity. There's an opportunity. As long as your eyes are open, your mind is active and your ears are listening. I mean, there's an opportunity in every second, every moment. And that's how I feel. So what he's talking about, the ball thing is yeah. that basically I used to do some few talks in colleges. So I used to throw balls in the audience. So there are sort of three kinds of people, uh, mm. you know, uh, one is that you throw a ball and the, the ball comes at you and you say, this is not me. I don't know why is the ball coming towards me. So you escape the ball, you leave it. The second person is who grabs the ball and everybody in the auditorium looks at why is he caught it. So he catches it, then everybody looks at him, he drops it. The third category is the one who sees a flying ball and catches it in one hand and says, it's a ball flying, I'm going to take it. Hmm. You know what I mean? Opportunities are flying. Which one are you? Are you going to grab the opportunity and say, this is mine? Are you going to catch the opportunity, get nervous because the whole society is looking at you, your family looking at you, drop it? Or you're the third one who doesn't even see the opportunity. Then you just stay in the zone that you are in. And you know, with your story, there are so many questions and parallels that I see which can practically be helpful for people. So at this stage in your story, I have, there is one specific question which I want to ask. And now I've realized that's enough. There is a big fad in the influencer marketing world. So that there is this thing that you should only do what you love. Follow your passion. And I was also somehow caught up with that conditioning. As I grew, now I realize that it's not necessary that your passion needs to be your profession. Your profession can be your passion also. <laughs> no, no, no. Rubbish. <laughs> no, so I want you to... <laughs> Rubbish. Don't listen to him. <laughs> Explain what you mean by that. <laughs> uh, dream come true is when you, you make your passion your profession. So, ideally never give up on the idea of making your passion your profession. Because if you do so, you've heard it before, you'll never go, go to work a single day in your life. But that dream doesn't come true for everyone. Hmm. Right? Hmm. That relates to many, many uh, factors, so to say, in life, which we are not in control of. Correct. The ideal life is when you make your passion into your profession and you make that into a success story. Hmm. See, the two elements to it, which I know where you're coming from, hmm. you made your pa passion a profession, hmm. but you haven't got the desired results from it. Correct. That's your panic button. Correct. Okay. So don't blame the fact that <clears throat> your gut made you go in the right direction hmm. of backing your passion. Hmm. Blame your mind who's so messed up hmm. that he could not make your passion succeed. You lack focus. Hmm. You lack maybe the skill set. Correct. You lack the opportunities. You lack the luck. Bad karma. I don't know what the fuck's wrong with your mind. Something is not right because your gut took you in the right direction because you have climbed every mountain. You have created a world record and you haven't died. <laughs> You're blessed. 
don't laugh it's not a joke no absolutely if you <coughs> you were not a good mountaineer you'd be dead by now mm -hmm. you're a good mo mountaineer that means you did follow your passion mm -hmm. but your mind and your the universe that you live in or you believe in has not given you the tools to make your passion into a successful profession the word is successful profession, profession. successful profession so success again <coughs> uh, parth has mm. to be defined yeah if you ask parth today all he wants is 2 crore rupees ask parth in 2025 all he wants is 3 <laughs> crore rupees ask parth today all he wants is a french girlfriend ask parth tomorrow he wants a brazilian girlfriend goal post change will kill me <laughs> goal post change that's human nature but look success you must define for yourself because it will help you sleep at night if you want one croissant for breakfast don't dream of five what's the point bro the reason i'm sitting with parth is because you are a successful hmm. professional this is my perception hmm. till today i didn't know you were unsuccessful profession professional hmm. i didn't know hmm. the reason i'm sitting with you is I'm because you're a man hmm. who's back to your passion <clears throat> and made it your profession hmm. and so i'm super impressed yeah i'm like parth is a guy i want to talk to yeah i want to be in his chat show on youtube yeah this is uh, fii my first youtube uh, chat Podcast. show ever with really? anybody yeah balls i'll do this <laughs> the fuck is this <laughs> you said one thing that if it works you know it's you who have made it if it doesn't work it's you who have made it it's absolute self accountability hmm. and i think that's where people lack i think defining path what is you have made it write that on a piece of paper don't talk about it yeah what is you have made it so that <clears throat> definition of success and a, a goal should be articulated for yourself not for society not for family not for politicians don't look outside look inside what does parth feel is his success and if parth has achieved it parth will be wow man it'll be like you got an oscar whatever you know you, you're the biggest indian amazing indian of the year yeah <laughs> he got it you he didn't got get it, it. He got <laughs> it. i know you're talking about good one no upper cut <laughs> see the way he gets <laughs> that's why i said it so <laughs> you you know you can't make his ambitions yours hmm. you'll always have a restless life your ambitions are yours your goals are yours define yeah. them achieve them yeah you're a success story yeah sometimes i watch yeah sitting in a car a guy having a vada pav yeah. just here only wali naka the joy that he's eating with, <coughs> with the lal mirchi you see his face wow it looks like he's eating the best beef burger in the world but it's just a vada pav hmm. but he's decided to eat it like hmm. it's a 100 million dollar hmm. burger that's it he's decided it you and me both know ये तो पचास रुपए का है वी नो की ये पचास रुपए का बड़ा पाव है सो इन आर आईज करेक्ट इज नॉट एन अचीवमेंट फॉर हिम इज हंड्रेड मिलियन डॉलर बर्गर सो सक्सेस इज वॉट यू डिसाइडेड एंड यू अचीव ब्रो हंड्रेड परसेंट you look outside what do you look at दिस इज फिल्म फेयर अवार्ड आर कमिंग नाउ देन ऑस्कर विल कम देन नेक्स्ट ईयर द नेक्स्ट ऑस्कर विल कम देर इज नो एंड टू इट इट इज एंड ओनली वंस यू बिकम अ चैंपियन यू डू डिफेंड योर टाइटल You will lena le. Yeah, you will be so upset if the next Gujarati climb Mount Everest is younger than you. Then you need not come. Why waste your energy on these useless things? Absolutely. And there are so many questions related to this, but I want to take you to. I know we've spoken about this that you are known for sunburn in the public, though you've done much bigger things and much, you know. much more things which i will like no, to speak no, to no you worries. about sanman <coughs> was born at a time when digital media existed hmm. and therefore it its amplification youth was far bigger than all my other achievements yeah. which were 10 times or 100 times bigger than sanman just to let you know yeah yeah sanman was possibly the smallest size events i have done in my life wow but because the digital era had come and how do i tell somebody who doesn't compliment me for sunburn to so i kept quiet and and then it became a thing like 
Shinder Singh does this. So, so I do hurt as an artist. I've done a lot more. Yeah, you, you get my point. Absolutely. So you know one artist only for Mona Lisa, but have you seen his other works? People know me for you know? just Everest, but I've climbed so many more harder mountains than exactly. that. Exactly. So I completely understand that. We only know you for your French girlfriend, but you had so many other exotic Maharashtrian girlfriends also. Marwa, <laughs> okay, sir. तेरी शादी नहीं होने देंगे। <laughs> no, so so so. Uh, how did what was the seed of thought behind Sunburn? How did it start, and what was the journey of it? I, because mm -hmm. I personally would like to know because it's become such a big thing. Yeah, <clears throat> it was. We were a B two B company, business to business, and we wanted to. I wanted to. I had a dream to go. I loved uh, consumers. I loved uh, humans, and I I love uh, the energy of humans and humanity. I just freak out on it. I love it. So I wanted to create something where many people enjoyed it, hmm. and there was a dream. So it's you know B two C is business to consumer. Correct. And therefore I launched cinema. Uh, so 1999 I launched uh, my first business of B two C, which is motion pictures. Okay. My first film was Pyar Me Kabi Kabi. It had 216 debuts. It's in the Limca Book of Records as the largest debuts in a Bollywood movie. Including my own debut, <laughs> so I gave myself a chance and everybody else also. Okay. Because nobody wanted to give me a chance. Okay. <laughs> That's dreaming and doing. Wow. Mm, got it. Mm. Put your money where your mouth is, bro. If mm. you want to win, so that's how Priya Me Kabi Kabi came. 2007, Sunburn <clears throat> was an idea uh, predominantly, uh, you know, where I wanted to unite the youth through music. So it didn't matter to me whether it was Sufi, pop, rock, classical, Bollywood, Hindi. Didn't matter to me at all. Upon research and a couple of people who worked in the office and who were hanging with us at that time in conversations, I so this is what I'm writing a book on now. It's called The Sunburn Man. I'm writing about how I knew of electronic music and trance music way back in 1980s, 1987, 1988, 1999, 1990. So I knew it long time ago. I was going to jungle parties in Goa ages ago before <laughs> Sunburn was born. Okay. And but I did not. I was not smart enough to understand why was I loving that music. That music had no lyrics, so electronic music has no words. Majority music. Correct. And India is the United States of India. Hmm. Every state speaks a different language, hmm. different, prays to a different god, eats different food, and we're not, not a sing-along country. We don't sing along. We don't know songs. We bring Shakira. We you know one song and done. Yeah. Ricky Martin. We don't sing along. Correct. Very few artists we know the songs <coughs> of. That's why we don't have a cricket anthem. Manchester United alone has 80 anthems. Wow. We don't have an anthem for cricket. It's India, India. Search in, search in. What is this? We don't have anything we sing in a stadium, and we call cricket our religion. So we're not much of a sing along nation. Got it. So mm. therefore, electronic music had no words in it. So I I felt that electronic music had the power to unite the youth of this country mm. through music, and that's how Sunburn <coughs> happened. And therefore, the line in 2007, which I said in the press conference, was the Sunburn has the power to make a social difference. Okay. So Sunburn I started to make because I wanted to make a social difference for, to the youth of the country, not for any other objective. It was in the first year of 2007. And that is why, from 2007, 50% of the sunburn venue from 2007 has been given to recreational lifestyle activities like library, cinema theater, flea market, rock climbing, beach volleyball, soccer. Why? Why am I doing all these activities when it's all about the music? Because 50% was about lifestyle. <coughs> because I always said, "Be who you want to be when you come to Sunburn." It's a community play, social difference. Absolutely. So you make friends while playing volleyball. You make friends while reading books. Wow. You make friends while listening to music, having a beer. It's up to you. Wow. I'm just creating another universe, a social fabric where humanity unites through music. Hmm. It could have been any genre, but I realized that electronic music will fly. And guess what? In 2024, it's still flying. Still flying. So I was right. As you said that you sunburn might be the smallest things. Out physical event. Physical. Smallest physical <clears throat> events. I've <clears throat> done large events. Correct. Kargil football match. Good luck India. Massive events. 80,000, 1 lakh people, regular basis before Absolutely. sunburn. Wow! Ah, nineteen ninety six, nineteen ninety four, yeah, nineteen ninety nine. So sunburn came much later. So I was an expert by some, that time sunburn came. Just want to clarify to the youth of the nation, yeah. whoever the promoters and event managers and entrepreneurs who wanted live events, just to let you know that you know uh, I was lucky and maybe my experience worked, but uh, we didn't have any deaths or arrests in sunburn. 
we done must have done about 6000 events on in the in the country wow. today so yeah you know expertise consciousness focus discipline matters when you're doing live entertainment because it's live entertainment and you somehow are emotionally and even technically responsible for the 30000 40000 people who come to party in your venue so be careful okay. absolutely and i want to ask you a little in general question because right now like you started businesses when you know entrepreneurship was not cool mm. aajkal to sab log startup you know everybody wants to yeah. have their own uh, venture the statistics say that <clears throat> i think around 90% startups they don't make it after 5 years you know by the time is 5 years most of them have shut down the question i want to ask is business versus job abhi aajkal people think that the right way to live life is to work for yourself have your own venture your own business and have a freedom yeah. based life <clears throat> अभी जो जॉब कर रहे दे हैव सच अ प्रेशर एंड स्ट्रेस विद इन दम सेल्स कि साला मैं बिजनेस कर रहा हूँ सॉरी मैं जॉब कर रहा हूँ आर सम पीपल मेड फॉर बिजनेस एंड सम पीपल मेड फॉर जॉब सम पीपल आर नेचुरल क्रिएटर्स एंड सम पीपल आर नेचुरल फॉलोअर्स द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट पार्थ आस मी वॉज वाई आर स्टार्टअप्स नॉट having a large success ratio in the recent times mm. and that is predominantly because this generation for the last decade or more than a decade and a half is driven by valuation and revenues and not net profits and that is why large organizations like weworks and including in india i think flipkart and god knows hundreds of startups have thousands have just <coughs> disappeared because the reason they were all driven by valuation so valuation is perception creating a uh, stock market related you 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 create a notional value for an organization and that's why i mean watch a documentary called we crashed and you'll understand why an organization a startup like we works lost 8 billion dollars in one day in 24 hours so you must understand why these things happen and and so then you'll understand why we've gone wrong so i feel startups are nothing but young people who at heart are entrepreneurs and who have a dream of an idea and they want to make that dream come true so that is brilliant uh, but at the end of the day the way you can pay salaries and the way you can consistently run an organization is by having genuine net profits that means profit after tax what is the money that you have in hand by the transactions that you've conducted in your business so that's the truth but recent stay i mean nobody wants to ask musk what is net profit is hmm. what tax does musk pay what i i think i pay more tax, tax than musk <laughs> mr elon musk ask him what is his net profit so somebody but is it just why am i taking his name i'm not against him i don't even know him he's a great south african guy he's, you know but he's the richest man on the planet wow interesting right because of the valuation valuation he's he's always giving you the next possible dream so what i'm trying to say is there's nothing wrong with that because the world is buying it is the richest man on the planet yeah but we are going through that era of uh, creating valuations and i think The second question that you asked also an important one is whether you're born to be an employee or a professional or you're born to be a businessman or an entrepreneur mm -hmm. right correct we are all born as a as a blank canvas but the minute we come out first our mother father start writing something on it yeah. <laughs> by naming yeah. us yeah. and then our first our family determines who we are and then the society determines who we are and then our culture and our faith and our belief and our geographical boundaries and our education system it just keep forming us mm. that's it i don't know how to answer this question because i i i believe that everybody is a genius everybody has brilliant skill sets but it's 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 the environment that you uh, have been tamed and trained but don't and, and if you have the uh, have a formula i say the formula of success is balls and brains hmm. you not not only need brains you also need the balls so in my family my uh, we are my brother and me uh, and me let's just talk about me i'm the i'm the first ever uh, entrepreneur ever from my family okay. my father is a professional my elder brother is a professional you know he's in sugar he's in cement mm. so it balls and brains and, and he, yeah absolutely and i i think especially the school uh from my little observation that i've made into my life the whole system the whole pattern of the you know yeah. education there is not to open your brain it's to make you very constricted the professor said do this you have to do this iske bahar thoda bhi kuch kiya yeah. he will not I mean, be appreciated I, 
you know i don't like i i don't want to be i don't want to generalize things but i feel school college these are all places of discipline mm mm-hmm. i you know you learn discipline you have to get up at so and so time exams come at so and so time you have to wear in a uniform you have mm. to look like this you know sh- shine your shoes Jee. all that jazz you know you'll Jee. get punished otherwise that happens from the childhood you know your parents <coughs> tell you if you don't do this i will not give you lollipop i mean that's threat it's fear marketing yeah. so you know all this happens but i i i said in my first ted talk my first slide said qualification is the biggest quali- disqualification wow. so if you've spent 15 years and 17 years learning engineering you your family your society will expect you to be an engineer but you could wake up with a dream after 7 year 17 years or 15 years of learning accountancy or engineering or space uh, you know science that i don't want to be this yeah so you can do it but will your family allow you will the society allow you will your mentors allow you will the circumstances so, allow you exactly and i think this is exactly what happened to me because and and i'll share something hmm. at the age of 18 after 12th ke baad we are made to decide what we want to do for the rest of our life we have to choose engineering or medical or whatever and i personally believe at the age of 18 for a child who has not gone into the world outside he doesn't know what is out there at the age of 18 you get into a college with a lot of loans and maybe not loans but a lot of investments also you know in the college fee and everything by the time you're 22 23 after you graduate you've seen a bit of the world now you want to do this for example something else and then you were like i my parents spent so many lakhs of rupees and then let me get See, into the it's it's never too late but yeah like to answer your question when you read things about our prime minister he at one point married settled <coughs> living in gujarat just woke up one day from his marriage left his family left his wife and embarked on a journey to serve the nation this is what yeah. the story says yeah wow that took guts yeah sachin tendulkar says that my brother ajit tendulkar put a bat in my hand at the age of 8 yeah so it wasn't sachin's decision hmm it was ajit till today sachin gives credit, credit to his brother yes and courtesy ajit putting a bat in sachin's hand at 8 sachin scored a 100 at the age of 17 in pakistan in a test match wow <laughs> <laughs> So look, it all is all good. It's all good, but I just want to say one thing: that it's never too late. Yeah, it's never, wale. never too late to listen to your calling. It's okay. It's different in China. It's different in America. It's different in Russia. It's different in India. Yeah. But I do believe that uh, we humans were born to dream. Yeah. And we, we don't have to stop dreaming. And when you dream it, you can do it. Yeah. All you need in the middle of a dream, and doing is self confidence, mm. atma vishwas. Mm. self belief mm. oh that's all you need between mm. a dream and do if you can believe in your dream it will happen yeah that's what has happened for me exactly yeah i like what do i tell you now i got 42% marks in hr i have not even taken my graduate degree is lying in kalina same year yeah it's still lying in kalina mera bhi ahmedabad mein btech padha hua hai but i built the biggest <coughs> biggest wow. brands in this country india has the youngest population in the world yeah I think sixty percent. Six hundred million. Correct. Below the age of twenty-five. So, as a business person yourself, where do you see India? A creative as a, business person. A creative business person. Don't dilute me. <laughs> no, I won't. Where do you see India heading as a nation? <laughs> It's a heavy question, but personally, I would like to know because somewhere, you know, <laughs> I, I'll tell you why I'm asking you this question. <laughs> I had a chance to go to Canada to study and to have a nice life. Suddenly, <laughs> just before my visa interview, I said, "Nahi jana hai. Mujhe India mein rehna hai because I see something in this country and I want to put my sweat and effort and blood into serving this land. Chahe paisa mile na mile, yeah. but now we see India is on an express highway to growth. So, do you see it like this? How do you see India heading? So, home is where your heart is because I think Absolutely. we spoke initially in the, in this chat about following your gut. So, I'm back to the same thought process that all the answers. Live within you. Hmm. I know I don't want to sound like a spiritual guru. I'm neither a sad sad guru, half guru, full guru. <laughs> I'm just a, a human person who's had a phenomenal uh, life journey with hmm. phenomenal experiences. So listen to your gut. Home is where your heart is. I don't want to talk about my country, India. I think it's a beautiful country. I live in it. It's it's the most rich cu- country as far as culture, tradition, 
emotions, hospitality, spices, music, everything. I mean, I, I don't think I don't yeah. I, I don't visualize another nation on the planet that has so much historic uh, amazements. Mm. It's like amazing. This mm. this country is crazy. Mm. So that is one part. But I feel that the world uh, is an interesting place right now. Mm. We're going through the phase Kalyug. So you know they say we are going through right now through a silent third world war. Uh, इसको हिंदी में कलयुग कहते हैं और कलयुग के बाद आता है सतयुग एंड सतयुग में टू थिंग्स विल बी मिसिंग यू नो व्हिच इज मनी एंड ईगो आइडेंटिटी आइडेंटिटी विल डिसअपीयर एंड एंड मनी विल डिसअपीयर दैट्स व्हेन सतयुग विल हैपन सो वी आर गोइंग थ्रू अ वेरी हार्ड टाइम ऑन द प्लेनेट टू बी ऑनेस्ट 57 एक्टिव वॉर्स राइट नाउ एज यू नो एज वी स्पीक राइट नाउ द न्यूक्लियर मिसाइल्स हेडिंग टुवर्ड्स ईच अदर डायरेक्शंस अ स्पाई शिप जस्ट लैंडेड इन मॉलडीव्स टुडे फ्रॉम चाइना Really? It's just now, like two hours ago, <laughs> <laughs> they planted spy ships in Sri Lanka, Pakistan. Like, there's so much insecurity on the planet mm. that I feel that humanity and humans are at huge risk right now. Look, I'll just say one thing: that in the name of power, politics, mm. religion, mm. and money, humans are authorized to kill humans. I never thought wow. I would see this day. Humans have justified. Slitting the throat of young children, uh, abusing women physically, killing families, bombing people for the sake of power, politics, religion, or money. So that's where humans have landed up creating the world today. Today, twenty twenty four, and this is post COVID, where we realized that this planet. has no borders and boundaries we realized yes. a war in europe has effects in asia mm. and a war in asia will have effects in america yeah. virus coronavirus taught us that yeah. there were no borders and boundaries no. when it comes to destruction but we haven't learned yet so it's a very fragile moment i i feel i'm i'm a child of the earth mm. my geographical location is india and i feel that my uh, home which is earth is being marginalized hurt ripped apart ripped apart and it's just unfair but i guess we are responsible because mm. the leaders uh, we have put in positions of power mm. are elected by us only no yeah they are our representatives so yeah, kahin so na kahin we are also way, deep yeah. within like that maybe yeah. so yeah just that's the situation that we are in right now you recently finished not finished completed 25 years in bollywood <laughs> a big congratulations pleasure for that i and, love cinema so tell us how did you get into cinema and what was your entry point and you produced correct me if i'm wrong over 80 bollywood films and you were responsible for the debut of so many famous people aishwarya rai yeah. I swear, I just did an, uh, an ad, a print ad with her. The okay. Three of them, the first one. Okay. But yeah, I mean, cinema is something that is interested in my soul and heart. I love cinema. It's the it's the most beautiful escape of three hours. I get to live somebody else's life for three hours mm. and um, and experience. Uh, wow, like another journey altogether. So yeah, cinema is great. Twenty five years, brilliant. But now there's many more stories to tell. So the job's not done yet. I'm loving it. and i do believe that this is a golden era for storytelling hmm. because language is not a barrier you know nothing is a barrier now hmm. you can make a movie in bihar hmm. and upload it and uh, if it's a good cinema or yeah. a good story yeah. 200 countries will watch it hmm. you know what i mean yeah 197 to be yeah yeah uh, practical but yeah it's so easy now today like if this interview is really impactful yeah uh, the whole world can watch it absolutely is that wow this is really crazy and sit here and speak to the entire world and that world is crazy it's amazing what a what a what a time what a time to tell stories but how did you get into the whole film world i it's it's written in, in one of my books that i, I blame my mother so she used to love going to cinema every day Ji. every odd day Ji. and i was the only one at home you know 10 12 year old boy sitting at home Ji. she used to grab me and take me for all movies Ji. so i've seen all sorts of religious cinema dark cinema social cinema i don't know i've seen cinema 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 with her yeah and then i just fell in love with cinema mm. and now i understand uh, you know the impact it has had on me i just love it sports i mean Sports and cinema, two pillars that I I really enjoy. Most people don't know this, but you were the man behind cracking the biggest sports deal in India. Yeah. So when we were growing up, when we were young, me, Shan, you know, हम लोग जो छोटे थे, India के jersey पे Sahara लिखा होता था. हाँ. तो हमको तो पता भी नहीं था Sahara क्या है and what is the reason behind it. But you were the man who 
made it happen. Yeah. So you know, because of uh, like I said to you earlier in the interview that uh, my dad created a certain fear in me hmm. uh, when I was playing cricket, and I I felt I was super talented, and hmm. so did. A lot of national cricketers said that I could have a career in cricket, hmm. but Dad felt that that time sports could not be a livelihood. Correct. At that time, so he was scared me and split my time into education and sport and other things. You know, mm -hmm. he always worried. He was worried about my future. Ji. And didn't let me play. Ji. So then I, you know, at one time I was so angry with this decision of my dad. Mm. I, I, he, my dad was my mentor, mm. my guru, my best friend. I never said this to him. He's no more. But I never said that I was upset about this. But I was really upset. That he didn't let me pursue sports as a career. Okay. All I wanted to be a, a, a cricketer for the country. That's wow. all. I had no other dream only. Wow. I had no other dream at that time. No entrepreneurship, nothing. But that didn't happen because dad split my time and and created that subconscious fear. That's why the job as a waiter. I gave mm. up my contract in Scotland, England, and came back from cricket to earn twelve hundred eighty rupees. I was making three lakhs there in three and a half, four lakhs in four months. Correct. Here I was getting what you can imagine what I was getting fifteen thousand a year. Yeah. But then yeah. they felt that getting a job is important. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's how it was in those days, conservatives. So anyway, when I when I understood that I cannot play cricket on the field for the country, I said I'll play cricket off the field for the country. If I can't play cricket for the country on the field, Correct. I will play it off the field. Okay. So I became a creative cricket entrepreneur. Hmm. I picked up not only this, bro. I represented nine out of eleven playing cricketers. I picked up the Australian team, South yeah. African team. I represented all the cricket teams. Wow! Then I went after social activation also, keep cricket clean, and got all the legends. And then I represented the 83 cricket team. I did everything in cricket hmm. that I could dream of. Every hmm. night I got a dream. Next morning, sign the deal. Hmm. Then the defining moment came in my hmm. life when I saw. That IMG won the contract hmm. for the cricket sponsorship for the chest, Ji. and I read an article that IMG may be selling it to Nestle and LG. And then I, f I was very patriotic. If you see my campaigns, is all proud to be India, come Absolutely. home to India, <laughs> all India, India, pr hmm. proud to be Bharati, Bharat hai hamara, hamay sahara. Absolutely, very patriotic yeah, yeah. bone I've got in my spine. Hmm. So I said, I read that article and I said, what is this rubbish? Ji. And I was fully into cricket at that time, but I lost the this opportunity of Indian team sponsorship because the numbers were huge. Huge, it was a hundred crore deal, and I said I, IMG was an international heavyweight, and I was a percept D mark. Correct. So then I read the article and I said there's an opportunity. Mm. When I read that article, I realized mm. what did I realize? IMG is going to sell it to two brands, okay. either one of them, LG okay. and Nestle. Mm. Both were not Indian. Mm. That means a nation as large as India did not have a sim. Single business brand that could afford wow. the sponsorship of the jersey of the national cricket team. That we needed a multinational to give us money for right? our Indian cricket. Yes, team. I went to a politician. I can't name him. He's okay. no more. Okay, and I requested him to bring up this issue in Parliament, and hmm. he brought it up. Hmm. That opened up the Pandora's box and make Mr. Jagmohan Dalmeya, who's also no more, Ji. the president of the board, to mm -hmm. re-look at the opportunity. And I went to him and I said, "Sir, I have two Indian brands. Mm. This is a lie. My mom taught me to lie if it doesn't hurt anybody. <laughs> but then she said that if you must always make the lie a truth later. Mm. Lie is like a dream, no? When you yeah. sleep at night, it look like lies only, no? Absolutely. But when you make it true next day." Then dream come true. So then I went and, and and we were able to swing the deal in our favor. <coughs> IMG slowly was told to leave, yeah. and that was the hundred crore deal that we gave Sahara, wow. and that stayed for twelve years. Wow! So it was a quite a large, uh, huge historic move. Yeah. And it came from a patriotic emotion mm. that how can a country of hundred hundred crore people at that time hundred and ten crores cannot have a single brand that wow. can afford the sponsorship of the national <coughs> cricket team? And the headline in Times of India said next morning. Indian cricket team finds Sahara. Kya baat hai? You can Google it. And I can tell you it worked because as a growing up person, a uh, Indian player Sahara was the first thing which came in that, our minds. That's how I, I was able to convince uh, Mr. Subrat Roy, who's also no more, just passed away okay. a month and a half ago, oh. convince him to give me hundred crores. He didn't want to. He said rubbish. Paisa kya pet pe ukta hai? He gave me a lecture in Ambi Valley oh. at breakfast. Yeah, a big lecture, and then I showed him a mirror, and I said, "Cricket is played 236 days of the year, and is shown on 17 networks across the country. Do you know that your brand will be on the chest of Sachin Tendulkar for 237 days on 17 networks in perpetuity, not just live?" And I showed him. I did the mathematics of the money. I yeah. said, "Do you know what value you're getting? So you have to sell it with science. You can 
Yeah. Like I said, balls and brains. Yeah, yeah. We need brains also. Yeah. So we had a document to justify the expenditure, mm. and then of course, balls. Yeah. <laughs> They are the ones that yeah. allow you to get there. Yeah. Also, you should have the balls to get up and leave the deal, which I did. When he said no to me twice, I got up and said, "Okay, sir, I'm going to Bombay." And when I was getting into my car, they called me back. You should have the power to leave the deal if you want the deal. You no, know, in every person's life, more than successes, they will face losses and failures and mm. defeats. And on a serious note. I'm sure you would have faced so many failures, yeah. and when people fail, most of them they just break within themselves, and all of that money and belief and people's pressures and everything just vanishes. Yeah. So give me some instances instances in your life when you failed, and how did you deal? I'm with not going to tell you a long story. I'm going to yeah. just tell you that <laughs> sure. I, most people say, and most majority people say yeah. that there is a lot of learning in defeat. I'll just say one thing to you. This is my take, and I know you guys won't like it. Defeat is defeat. There is no learning. It's very bad to lose. <laughs> mm. So when I lose, I cry. I, I, I dig my head in the in the sand like an ostrich, <clears throat> and then I get up next day and say, "Fuck it, I'm going to win again. Like I'm going to win now." That's it. There's, 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 there's no learning in losing. Losing is lose, man. <laughs> when you lose, you lose. Mm. Defeat is defeat. So I don't know. I just like winning. I keep working hard. So I just focus on winning. Yeah. So the loss, I try and get over it in 24 hours and 12 hours. And like, yeah. Forget this fucking loss, man. Get over it. Losing is damn bad. Don't lose, bro. You think today's people have become too emotionally driven? And, मतलब, if something bad happens, they are driven by their emotions. And as you said, 24 hours, you do all the emotional shit, get it out of your system. Yeah, bounce back. Get it over there. Yeah. You lost there. Yeah. What is there to learn in loss? मैंने क्या गलती है पागल हो गया क्या हार गया चल ना आगे बढ़ यू बोर्न अवे ना यार हार गया है दो तीन बार एंड लॉ ऑफ एवरेज देखो ना जिंदगी में ब्रो इफ यू नोटिस यू हैव टेन विक्ट्रीज यू हैव टू लॉसेस यू ऑन अ गुड रेशियो कैरी ऑन एंड इफ यू गाय हैविंग टेन लॉसेज एंड टू विक्ट्रीज देन हैव चेवन प्राश दिमाग की बात कुछ तो कर ब्रो तेरे चक्र गलत चल रहे हैं <laughs> Why I said this? Yeah. No, no, you don't think I'm an idiot. Are Baba, victory and loss be there? Who define? Karna hai. You only define your success ratio. No. How will you lose if you def define your success hmm. in life? Hmm. When you leave success in other people's hand, that's when they decide whether you lose and win. You decide what is your success formula. How will you lose then? Hmm. What are you talking? Absolutely. Success is I'm <coughs> going to have a masala cheese omelet with two toast today. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I did not say that I'm going to go to so and so sushi and hmm. have salmon. Uh, hmm. No, hmm. my success is in a masala cheese omelet today. हो गया मेरा मैं तो जीत गया. Absolutely. You define your success. You will never lose, never fail. Journey is a destination. All that jazz. I appreciate that. But if you make your journey your destination, then it's great. But if you have a destination, get to the destination. That doesn't hurt also. Absolutely. So it's up to you, but pretty much. Absolutely. One question which is relatable to a lot of people who are into uh, startup environment. Like if if you are 1920 right now in today's times, 2024. If you have nothing right now, what is that one business that you will start, which you feel in today's time will make you a fortune and a good. Become life? a counselor for mental health. <laughs> This generation needs help. <laughs> Lot of therapists. No, yeah, you know, nobody is talking to anybody, yeah, bro. Everybody is lonely, but everybody looks very famous and popular. I think everybody is hurting, yeah. Everybody is lost. I don't know. Nobody hugs anybody. Nobody talks to anybody. Nobody listens to anybody. It's a weird scenario going on. But everybody pretends to be very happy. It's a crazy time, yeah. I don't know. I to miss the touch, the feel. I mean, you know, like where where I stay. Yeah. Normally, ten years ago, I would be standing down in the nights after my dinner, and ten yeah. guys will pass on a bike. My buddies will come. No one comes. 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 Anything to do with human relationships is going to be fantastic. I think the generation is going to soon understand the depth of emotions, uh, reality. This generation is going to wake up one morning and understand that AI means artificial intelligence, and they will Google the meaning of the word artificial. It means fake. They will Google the meaning or 
of the word VR, virtual reality, and they will go to the dictionary and find out virtual means virtual, not real. You are surviving on two pillars in society today, which is artificial and virtual. Both don't exist, bro. You should be surviving on truth, on facts, on touch, on feel. You will bring it back to reality. Humans are social creatures. We need the touch, we need the feel, we need conversations, we need emotions. So that has to come back. It cannot survive like this. You, you cannot be like this. I dislike what social media <coughs> has done. I don't call it social media. I call it digital media. Mm. I, I pray to you guys, don't call it social media. Call it digital media. Just like we have print media, we have outdoor media, we have television media, you have digital media. There is nothing called social media. Wow. Digital media is an opportunity for you. Convert digital media into a business. Don't con think or believe that digital media is an extension of your personality and your life. That's a lie. And that is, if you do believe in that, you'll be lonely, you'll hurt, you'll not have a good quality of life. Social media, <coughs> drop that word, it's digital media. It's an opportunity. Digital media is a fantastic platform to exchange information, to make money, to start businesses. It, don't make digital media your life. It's wrong. Your life in reality is touch, feel, real. You've been sold artificial intelligence and virtual reality. 100%. Please understand when you press that button, I accept in Facebook and Instagram or whatever shit you keep accepting, you're giving away all your rights. You were born to be free. Mm. The one thing that you die for is freedom. You've just sold and given away your freedom to everybody. You're given your eyes, your retina, your fingerprints, your, your social photographs, your family fabric. You shared your entire universe with the whole world. You're mad or what? You know, I feel like that. What is absolute freedom according to you? To dream and do. If I dream of like leaving right now by road to Goa with mm. you, chal. Mm. What is stopping you? Mm. Chal, chalte, chalega kya? Chalunga na. Chal, chalte. 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 Absolute freedom is to dream and do. And, and, and before ending this conversation, <laughs> Just have a two minute quick rapid fire. Ah, lovely. Hana. What is your favorite food? Your favorite dish? <coughs> Alu gobi. Alu gobi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's plain and simple. <laughs> Which is your all time favorite movie? Ah, two. Piasa mm -hmm. and Pakiza. Okay. Which is your favorite Bollywood actor? Changed over a period of time. Yeah, okay. From Meena Kumari to Madhubala to Meena, uh, Madhuri Dixit. Yeah. All M's. Okay, okay. Which is that one uh, destination in the world which is your all-time favorite? Presently, Rishikesh. Why? It's got a flow. I like to flow. I believe we are 70% water. I need flow. Rishikesh just allows me to flow. While I sit statistically on the banks of the Ganges hmm. or, or the Gangama. <laughs> They'll say, why you have an accident in Ganges? <laughs> Gangama. So, when it's bad, it's not Ganga. Haji. I feeling a different bro. And the chants that are in Rishikesh, there are a lot of chanting on every side. Ram ki chanting, Hanuman Ji, ki, wow. kabhi -kabhi, eh, mosque se bhi aari, azaan aari hai. Pagal pan hai, yaar. superb hai. And that Ganga is a lot of shanti. It seems like it doesn't look like it doesn't look like it. But inside, I know that there is some joy. Yeah. There is some joy. Yeah. Superb hai wo. Absolutely. When I have to find myself, Rishikesh. Wow. Maza. Absolutely. Aap bhi jao. Absolutely. YouTubers. 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 <laughs> go. I mean, I can't believe it. I got a room for 500 bucks tonight. Unbelievable kulchas. <laughs> okay. Which is, which is, <laughs> which is out of all your ventures and businesses, which is that one business which is very close to your heart? Was cricket marketing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and now it's cinema. Beach or mountains? Sea or mountains? Yeah, it was very interesting. Dream would be uh, a destination which has the mountain and the ocean together. <laughs> yeah, because I, I don't know, I love mountains, but I love the flow of the ocean. As a mountaineer, what do you like about mountains? Just a sense of security. It just makes me feel safe. Hmm. Ocean makes me restless, mm -hmm. which is my other personality. Hmm. So an ocean mountain combo is what I, I would love and thrive for <coughs> to live in. Interesting. Which is that one 
song or artist that you are currently listening to in loop song i have one time song only jaane wo log kaise the jinko pyar se pyar mila humne kaliya mangi thi kaato ka haar mila is pe aisa gurudat song aaj to gaane nahi ban rahe pata nahi kya aawaz aa rahi hai bahut mm-hmm. <laughs> we had an era of songs in 2000 but yeah this is my old time all time favorite and then of course pakistan chalte chalte mujhe yahi koi mil gaya tha wah who is, who is your favorite cricketer of all time kapil dev why he dreamt and did it he was a i think everybody did no not really he, no he is no. is india's greatest all rounder and mm-hmm. world's greatest all rounder cricketer mm-hmm. the millennium <coughs> he bowled he batted he fielded his catch of women richards in the world cup yeah uh, what is yes. the match his 175 not out against zimbabwe qualified us for the world cup final mm. he's a batsman bowler like oh my god are you mad mm. he dreamt of bowling he bowled he dreamt of batting he batted he dreamt of fielding he fielded he dreamt wow. of being the indian cricket captain he won he dreamt it he won it wow. he dreamt of winning the world cup for india for the first time he did it you mad or what which of the cricketers done it mm. he's a legend whatever he dreamt he did it and he's kapil dev absolutely from some small town village bro mm. in north the he dreamt of winning a world cup he won it for us he dreamt of scoring 175 not out yeah when india was i think 35 or 7 mhm fii wow yeah he came at the seventh over yeah he d- dreamt to be the best bowler india has he became he dreamt of being an all rounder he became pagal hai kya kya <laughs> legend hai wo if resources or scientific logic is not a limitation what is that one crazy thing that you would wish to do for example i want to climb the highest mountain on mars scientifically it's right now impossible so as a kuch i want to unite humanity so i have sent a plea to 195 <coughs> countries and it got rejected by all of them all the prime ministers present rejected it i feel our address is incomplete so all the passports on the planet have six columns mm-hmm. which divide you your name your religion your skin color your country your state your city mm-hmm. i want to add one thing that unites us which is planet, planet. Wow. earth That's it. I have one thing. I want to unite humanity. And you actually sent proposals. Yeah, I sent all, all, all rejected me. I got replies. I got couriers back. I sent a plea to all prime ministers and presidents on the planet. They all rejected it. I want to unite humanity. <coughs> I want to market peace, love, and unity, which is intangible, against destruction, death, and divide, which is tangible. Yeah. I want to see one eight point four billion happy people before I go. Why can't we have happiness? What is going on? Why can't we be happy here? Why can't we give food to everybody on the planet? Three things we have to give to everybody on the planet: mm. shelter, food, and education. ये नहीं कर पाए हम लोग. चांद, मार्स, मस, कुत्ता, बिल्ली, बिल गेट, स्टीव जॉब. वो तो बेचारा मर भी गया बेचारा. Cancer से. He wrote a lovely letter before dying. Then money and power and technology can't do anything. <laughs> so what is this nonsense, yar? We can't even feed and educate and give shelter to humanity. To eight. 0.4 billion people, and you keep inventing AI, space shuttles, Concorde, bullet train. Hmm. क्या है ये? Hmm. Apple 16, iPhone. Hmm. <laughs> I think the खाना छत पढ़ाई तो बनता है. वही sorted नहीं है. वही sorted नहीं है. तो unite humanity. <coughs> That's the answer. Wow. One advice that you would give me. You have known me since three, four years, and as somebody who I personally look up to. and who is trying to do many things in the world so be f- be okay. fearless like the way you were when you climbed mount everest dar mat yaar tu pehle dara nahi tha ab kyu dar raha hai bahut darta hai aajkal and you, you can somehow see that yeah. i've changed yeah it's yeah, totally changed be that same gujarati that you were when you climbed that was your destiny that was who you are you're thinking too much you didn't think when you climbed mount everest since the time you climbed it you've been thinking you fucked it up the devil is taking over parth I told you, no. You climb Mount Everest because you believed in your gut. The minute you climbed it, you allowed the mind to rule you. Shoot the mind, live by the gut again. You like, you will have the best time of your life, guaranteed. Wow. Almost. Rone ke words bhi ho main, but thank you so much, sir. My pleasure for giving me your time. My pleasure. And I hope you guys also. I mean, more kuch bolne ke state mein nahi ho because you hit exactly the right nerves which were blocked. Adar ki chai. Thank you so much with Jai bis- Hind with biscuit nahi wale Jai Hind Jai Maharashtra Jai Shri Ram